I'm Mike, and today, the Impossible Burger, particularly the technology behind this veggie burger that is literally tricking people into thinking that they're eating real meat or real animal flesh, has also led Google to reportedly offer to buy the company for a quarter of a billion dollars, and has Vogue saying, quote, we've arrived in a modern, bountiful, and dare we say, sexy herbivore era. The Impossible Burger is not your average veggie burger. They went as far as to use gas chromatography to identify specific components that are key to the meat experience. Thankfully, they did refrain from adding any type of poop replacements as that is a common ingredient in meat. But I have to ask, how committed are you? Anyway, the result is a burger that not only tastes more like meat than your average fast food burger, but has adamant meat lovers saying this could be a legitimate meat replacement that they will get on board with. This carnivore is convinced. I really like this burger. I would actually prefer this over red meat. I'm pleasantly surprised. I do need to stop eating so much red meat, so maybe this is a good alternative. Okay, so what's it actually made of? Well, it's mainly wheat and potato proteins with coconut oil and some soy. Okay, so how does it produce such sorcery? For starters, we know it's not any magical completeness of animal protein that gives meat its taste, as much as we would like to think that we can taste protein, like predatory animals that have protein receptors, we do not have those receptors. So that meaty flavor is not about tasting a particular amount of amino acids in a given protein, like, mmm, that lysine is delicious. No, seriously, have you ever tried unsweetened protein powder straight? It's like chalk. No, it takes more than that. It all comes down to the heme, the heme found in hemoglobin in blood. Heme carries oxygen, which not only gives their veggie burger the unique chemistry to create a meaty smell when cooked. I interrupt you because I just got a whack of meaty, like, smell. Is someone pumping, yes. someone like cooking a like burger it, somewhere? Like it. But it also gives it that bloody taste as Impossible Foods founder Patrick Brown describes. Uh, it's what gives meat its unique meaty flavor. It's the bloody taste of raw meat uh, and the explosion of flavors and aroma um, during cooking are all chemistry that's catalyzed by heme. For reference, it's that somewhat metallic taste when you bite your tongue or cut the inside of your mouth. Now as a vegan, I think this is gross. This is not what I look for in food. But for others, this could create the experience necessary to drop the animal flesh habit. The heme iron also gives it a beef-like pink tone when raw and a darker red tone when cooked. But in the case of the Impossible Burger, it is not mammal blood from the inside of your mouth or a pig or a cow. It is leg hemoglobin, which is the same hemoglobin that naturally occurs in legumes. Now you're probably familiar with heme in the context of red meat, but it actually occurs in smaller amounts throughout all plants. But in the case of Impossible Foods, they actually took the genes from soybeans that produce leg hemoglobin hemoglobin and injected them into yeast, and so they create it through yeast fermentation. Yes, injecting a gene from a plant into yeast is genetic modification, and is actually quite a similar process to how we create vegan insulin, for example. The question is, do they fully separate the GMO yeast from the end product, the heme, or not? It appears they have not made that information public, but it is doubtful that they will receive organic or non-GMO certifications. You may be wondering, why do plants need heme? So quickly, I want to go over what I think is the coolest use they have for heme. You might be familiar with it from my veganic farming video, and that is nitrogen fixation. Legumes like soy and other beans have the unique ability to fix or convert nitrogen from the air into a available form. They do this by creating a symbiotic relationship with a bacteria that actually infects their root and tricks them into feeding them sugar. They use that energy to then create a chemical reaction that is anaerobic or lacking oxygen that then converts nitrogen from the air into a bioavailable form. The challenge is in order to keep the reaction going in the nodule that forms on the root, they need to keep it anaerobic or devoid of oxygen, but there are cells within the nodule that still require some oxygen, and so they use the leg hemoglobin to transport that oxygen to those cells without making the environment too oxygenated to keep the reaction going. You know your legumes are fixing nitrogen well when you split the nodules open and they have a nice dark pinkish color like raw meat. However, for logistical purposes, this method lost out to giant vats of yeast that can produce hundreds of burgers worth of heme. Okay, now let's look at the pros and cons of this burger, starting with environmental pros. The company claims that, quote, 
Substituting a quarter pound Impossible Burger in place of one beef patty saves as much water as a 10 minute shower, takes 18 driving miles of greenhouse gas emissions off the road, and frees up 75 square feet of farmland. So it's an environmental winner for sure, but one con, like the meat burgers that it is replacing, there are various components here that are not healthy. For example, heme iron is one of the reasons that the WHO deemed red meat a probable carcinogen. The same reactive oxygen that makes the Impossible Burger have meaty chemical reactions also can be a free radical that can trigger DNA damage and cancer. The Impossible Burger also has soy protein isolate, which boosts IGF-1 levels. IGF-1 fuels every stage of cancer, so elevated levels of IGF-1 are not a good thing. However, as this study shows, it takes several servings to boost IGF-1 levels with soy protein isolate. Well, this study shows that animal protein does it in lower quantities. It also has coconut oil, which we love to talk about as healthy, but as this study shows, it raises your levels of LDL or bad cholesterol. Not as much as butter, though. This brings me to the health pros. A, it does not contain cholesterol, and B, it actually has B12, making it a one-stop replacement for meat. So the health point here is that it is not a health food. It is a healthier alternative to meat, but when compared to whole plant foods, it certainly loses out. And another small con is that it does contain gluten, which might prevent some people from trying it, even if their gluten intolerance is imaginary. Now for the biggest pro of all, every animal-based burger that is replaced with an impossible burger is a piece of animal flesh that was not eaten, and those are funds that are diverted away from the animal industries. This could carve a large chunk out of the livestock industry's market share and lead to a lot less suffering and cruelty and death. Now to the obvious con, you can't just eat one if you want to. Yeah, it's been available at the Momofuku Nishi restaurant in New York City, and it will be available in another undisclosed location this fall in San Francisco, but it is unclear when it will be available everywhere else, if it will be available in grocery stores. One thing is though, if you are a restaurant, you can apply to partner with them and serve the burger at your restaurant. In the end, this burger might be the most true and effective meat replacement that exists. From a technical perspective, it is an achievement, but from a health perspective, it is merely an improvement and certainly falls short of the whole plant foods that it was derived from. So will you give it a try? Let me know down below what you think about it. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to like the video to get more people involved in the conversation and subscribe for more future videos. All right, thank you for watching. It's happened many, many times uh, that people have eaten our burger without, without realizing what they're eating. eating. In fact, it was uh, uh, an anonymous, very well-known figure that I just heard about yesterday, found some sitting on her uh, kitchen counter and scarfed them down. Uh, and thought she'd been eating meat until she was informed that, uh, wow, it's something else.